Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Kevin. It is 427. We start promptly in three minutes. Your host, presenter, Melissa Armour, is here with us today. Start time in three minutes. Three minutes start time, everyone. Thank you and welcome. This is Online Creator Central. We are very pleased to uh, welcome each and every one of you today. Uh, let's see, last person to join was uh, Chris. Oh, Jane, Jeff, Steve just joined us. Before that, Draz, Jeff, B, uh, Victor, JC, and others scrolling up here at random. This is Online at Creator Central. Welcome, Creator Tom, Tracy, and the uh, Galahad is here. Uh, Tracy, Galahad, Matt. And again, this is Online Creator Central. Welcome, Phil, Daniel P, Kinster, and others. Irving. It is, and others, it is now exactly 4.30 Eastern time. Please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter. Please welcome from the stockswish.com. Please welcome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Kevin and Kathy and Online Trader Central. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called the Stock Swoosh LLC. And today I'm going to lecture on advanced technical analysis. I'm a trader, and the way that I trade is based on technical analysis. Some of you know what that is, some of you don't. We're going to talk about this here in the lecture today. If you would like more information after the lecture, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. And you can feel free to go and sign up on my YouTube page. I do have a lot of videos on YouTube, trades that I've done, and past webinars as well. So welcome. A lot of people trade based on fundamentals. Some people trade based on chart reading or technical analysis. A lot of people say, well, can you really make money in the market using advanced technical analysis skills without even knowing anything at all about the fundamentals of a specific stock? And the answer is yes. Actually, the way that I trade, I don't even look at anything that's happening fundamentally in the stock. So it's very, very specific what I do. It's based on reading price. Understanding how to read price in the correct direction is a key ingredient in profiting the market. That's how I'm able to make money. Set yourself apart from the world of novice traders and investors by becoming an expert in technical analysis. This is what I have done, and I'm teaching people how to do this. Experts have knowledge, do their homework, and read information in real time in the form of price patterns in charts. Okay, so this is what it is. We're looking at charts specifically, and we're going to look at a lot of charts today. So becoming an expert in technical analysis is a vital ingredient to becoming successful as a professional trader or investor. And again, I'm a day trader. You could be an overnight trader, a long-term investor. Either way, you're still looking at what's happening in the price. What a current company's value or worth is always reflected in the price now. You would see it right away as if something would happen. So price patterns and charts hold the key to making decisions ahead of time and in the moment to profit and profit substantially. And that's how, how you do it. That's how you get in something, a specific stock, reading the price and making money then, reading what it's doing right now, that's how you make money in the trade, whether it goes up or down, depending on whether you're going long or shorting it. 
Price really supersedes everything else, even fundamentals, because as I just explained, something that's happening in the chart of a company or even the market will happen where you'll see it right in that moment, okay? Way before it would even be reflected in the fundamentals that would carry over into the price. So really, I do very, very specific things with my trading, which I'm going to talk to you about today. But it's really this idea of making the time to trade in the higher level. I think a lot of people think they're trading on a higher level because they may use multiple indicators, Fibonacci's, all kinds of fancy indicators, but they're really not trading on a higher level. They think they are, but they're not. When I'm saying higher level, I mean training your brain, okay, which is what I've done. I've trained my brain correctly to read price in charts. People go to school to learn how to trade, okay? It's no different. If you wanted to become an expert in something, if you wanted to become a doctor, a physician, an attorney, okay, you would have to go to school to learn how to do that. Training is no different. Even though you could do this for yourself from home, which is what I do, you still have to learn what to do and go to school to learn how to do it. Otherwise, you're risking your money in the market needlessly and are probably going to lose if you don't know what to do. It's very, very unique, this type of trading that I do. It's day trading, or even if you're doing swing trading, you really have to learn what you're doing if you want to trade to be profitable. You have to learn. Okay, You can learn from me. You can learn from other people. But I'm here today to talk about what I do for, so you can listen and see whether or not you think that what I do is something that you would even be interested in learning about. Okay, Because it is advanced. It, it, it is. So first, let's talk about what technical analysis is. The methods used to analyze securities and make investment decisions falls into two very broad categories. Fundamental analysis and technical analysis, as I was earlier talking about. Fundamental analysis involves analyzing the characteristics of a company in order to estimate its value. For example, if you would read an earnings report in a certain company and decide if you, whether or not you wanted to buy the stock or if you already owned it, if you wanted to sell it. Technical analysis takes a completely different approach. It doesn't care one bit about the value of a company or a commodity. Technicians, sometimes called chartists, this is really what I am, are only interested in the price movements in the market that are happening in the moment that they're happening, okay, which is always right now. The most important thing is what's happening right now, okay? You have to train your brain to read price action. I only trade one strategy, which I'm going to talk about today. But this is how I've trained my brain to be a profitable trader because I only do one specific strategy. And in fact, I'm very, very focused on shorting. I like to short. That's my thing. However, I can go long and I can also reprice action to the upside, which is one of the things we're going to talk about today because we're going to talk about the market because the market's higher. But I've trained my brain, okay, to read price action so that I know whether or not I see weakness or strength in the price action that's happening in a chart. And we're going to look at charts today. But how, have I, how am I able to do this? I've trained my brain, OK? Reading price is like learning a language, like anything else you'd want to do. You have to train your brain. That means actually doing the work to understand and comprehend what the price is actually doing. Now, here's a chart, okay? This is a, this is a chart, and if you've never traded before, if you're brand, brand new to trading, this is what a chart looks like. This is a chart of cores. It's Michael Kors. And the, every bar here is a candlestick, okay? The green ones depict buying on the day, and the red ones depict selling or shorting on the day, to simplify this out, okay? The volume is down here, and the days here, you can see this is a daily chart. And these are just some moving averages that I have on here. You don't really need to worry about those right now. But in advanced technical analysis, you're looking at not just the body, okay, of the color of the body of the coloration to see what's happening, but what the actual numbers are of the price. And also, I'm not just looking at these moving averages, because if you just quickly, quickly, quickly look at these moving averages, you might say something different all along in here. You've got to get more information and pull more information out of this chart than just simply quickly looking at the moving averages or any other indicator you put on here. Again, I don't have Fibonacci's or anything else on my charts, but if you put anything else on here, a lot of people rely on these other indicator type things to tell them what, 
for example, the trend is of the stock and the overall long-term trend or even the intraday trend, what to do with it on the day. And you just can't get enough information on that to know specifically what to do with the stock, even to trade intraday. I'm not just talking about overnights. I've created a new and bold way of looking at price, looking at price accurately to read directional bias. That's how you make money in the market. You make money in the market by getting in something at the correct direction. Otherwise, you lose. Okay. I know there's people that scalp. All right, I get that, but you can't really make a significant amount of money scalping, and you're actually at a lot of risk when you're scalping if you're taking the size where you would be making thousands of dollars in one trade, uh, because it could turn against you very quickly, and then you could lose thousands of dollars in one trade. So I'm not a scalper. Okay, this is something where you are actually looking to read the correct directional bias of a stock or the market. There is one underlying principle that exists in the world of the market and in every chart and ETF in existence. What is it? It is a pattern that exists in the stock market, in every stock that exists, including the ETFs. Understanding how to read price is so critical to create substantial gains in the market. What do you need to look for in a chart to know whether to take a trade, what is important, and what is not important? And this is what we're going to talk about today. So what is important? What is the most important thing that's happening in a chart? In order for you to make money as anyone, a trader, an investor, I don't care who you are, big or small, how much money you have, it doesn't matter. What is important? Who is in control? Who is in control? Who is in control of the stock on this day? will tell you whether or not you, as a day trader, will be able to make money because you must play with the control. Now, what do I mean by control? I mean the control of the money. It all comes down to the money. Who is controlling the money? Because that's what moves the market. It's, mo it's money that moves the market. Money flows in and out. So you have to be with who is controlling the money in the market. In that particular stock or the market itself, it doesn't matter, how will you be profitable by playing with the control, okay? So you have to be able to read the control of the money. If you incorrectly read the control of the money, then you will most likely lose. Now, that's not to say that some days you might not make money as a person trading the market, misreading control. Some days you might be, but you'll be back and forth, back and forth. Your results will be down or break even. And no, they'll be down. They'll be down if you don't play with control. Many people don't know how to read control correctly, okay? I'm very good at this, and we're going to talk about why in a moment here. But I'm explaining to you, I'm really just breaking it down nuts and bolts here. The fact is what you are, need to do is re reading price, is training your brain to read control. Who's controlling the market? And we are going to talk about the SPY today. Because what is important? Important is training your brain to read control. Okay, the I just looked at the market actually before I came on here within the last 45 minutes of the market closed bullishly today and I knew that it would and I knew that it would and the market was red all morning and I knew the market was going to hold today. How am I able to read a chart like the SPY? This is a SPY ETF. Okay, I just clipped this here back from since October, mid-September. All right. How am I able to read this chart and know with 27 red days in here, that the market is still higher and it's going to make a new high, which the SPY is going to do, and I have 100% conviction that it will this month in February. Because I'm reading who is in control. And this is where it comes down to the advance, because if you read this and didn't understand what I know, and again, we're going to talk about it in a minute, about the strategy that's telling me who's in control, you would see all the red bars, all these red bars, which was selling. And some people shorting. People are short this market right now. There are people that have sold out of their long positions in the market in the last two months, December, all of January. There's lots of red bars in the market. If you do not know how to read control properly, the control of the money, then you may think the market's coming in. You may be short the market now. You might have sold out of a long position you have and taken profits. And you're going to miss the move when it happens. Okay. But you might have done all those things because you see all the red. And I get it. I see the red too. But the fact is, the market itself is higher 
And I know this because I'm reading on an advanced level the who, who's in control. Who's in control of this market? And the bulls are still in control of this market. They are really in control of this market. And it's just a lot of people don't see what I see. Okay, this is what I do and what you learn from me if you came and, and, and learned from me. But I just want to point out here that it's not about just seeing the coloration of all the red bars and candlesticks for those of you that do trade that's happened in the last two months. That doesn't mean that the bears are in control because they're not, okay? And every time I see a day like today in the market, it confirms what I already know, who's in control. It is about who is in control, okay? That's how you make money. So again, what is important? Who's in control? What else is important? Gaps. This is the strategy that I use to read the control, okay? So how am I reading the price action, the control through gaps? This was a gap that happened last week. This was a bullish gap. This stock is EA. These candlesticks are off here in this last couple of days. Something was wrong with the charts here. But the stock did gap up. For wherever it closed in here the prior day in 48 something, it did gap up to 50, 51 something in the morning. The stock gapped. So this is a strategy that I have a method to use to determine the control, meaning what would happen to this EA on the day? Would EA get sold on the day and go red that you would short it? Or how would you know to go long EA to buy it before the green bar forms? Now afterwards, it's easy to see here where the stock ran up two and a half dollars or actually even more, it went past 54, it went all the way up to 55 something. But how would you know to take the position here before this bar forms? You would have to look at the price action and the strategy that I do to determine whether or not you want to short it or go long it. Okay. So what is a gap? This is the method I use to determine price action and control. A stock gap from the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading, just like in the EA. Closed at 48 something, open at 51 something. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. That's all that it is. That's all that's happening there in that chart. And what happens in a gap? Some gaps get sold, some gaps get shorted, some gaps get bought. Okay. Some down gaps get bought. Some up gaps get shorted. You don't know. So how do you figure it out? How can you read it? I have a method I use. It's a rating system. So the, this is a new method to read gaps that I created myself. It's, it's a method that I use every morning for any stock that I look at. It's a 26-point rating system, and you can use this to apply to ETFs like the SPY and the QQQs, which is how I'm able to read that the market's higher. I'm reading the gaps. I'm reading the ratings of the gaps to know that the market's higher. So I look at a stock or the market when it gaps, and I rate it according to the rating system. If it meets the criteria, I know that it's a gap that will be either a long or short. So therefore, I know who's in control of the stock on the intraday, whether or not I should go long the stock, or whether or not I should short it. And conversely, if you're in a stock long, you could rate a gap, you could rate a down gap, and, and figure out if it's a good bearish gap to know whether you should exit a long position. You may be in overnight to know if it's going to be a good short, then you'd want to get out of it, knowing that it would follow through to the downside. And if you were long enough money, you'd want to exit it. Okay. For example, if I was long the market overnight, I would not have, I would still be in my position. Okay, long the market, despite the fact there were bearish gaps that happened in the SPY and the QQQs in the last two and a half months. Okay, so it's a, it's a system you can lose for a lot, a lot of different things. And I've had people ask me about this for futures and options. I teach the rating system, which teaches you the directional bias to play of the ETF and the stock. It is up to you if you do not do the equity trade, which is how I trade. Whether you do the option or whether you do the future, it is up to you to know how to apply that, to take that type of position in the market. I don't specifically teach options or futures. I teach equity trading. I'm taking straight equity trading as a day trader. Okay. So I titled my system a golden gap because it's like finding gold in the market because the gaps are really good. It's a gap that has a high odds of working on the day in the direction of the gap. Finding gaps, the rate according to the 26-point golden gap rating system is like finding gold in the market. Golden gap spot institutional money, again, that controls stocks in the market. Golden gaps are made by professionals. They are gaps that have a high odds of working on the day in the correct direction of the gap with a large, large momentum move. For example, just like that EA. Okay, that stock went to the dream target, passed expectations on the day, and was a huge trade to go long if you wanted to go long something. So 
You would get up in the morning if you saw this gap, which you might have, I'm sure you would have, and you would have rated it. And in the rating, it would tell you whether or not this stock was going to go red on the day or green. And then you know whether or not you should go long it or short it if you want to. Okay. So again, it goes back to, oh, here's today. This is how, I don't know how we exactly closed today. This was today's trading. It goes back to what is and what is not important. Understanding what is and what is not important is very important because you see in the chart of the SPY, the moving averages are sloping down. The SPY market, the ETF, has made a series of lower highs and lower lows. Today, actually, it made another lower low in the market. But this, that looking at the moving averages, whether they're sloping up or down, and the pivots is not enough information to tell you who's actually in control of this market. Reading the price action tells me that through the strategy that I know on gaps, and I rate the gaps to determine the ones whether or not they are in control of who's in control of it. Okay, And that's how I know who's in control of this market still is the bulls. So why do golden gaps work to read price? Well, Gaps are created with large institutional money. That's who really moves stocks anyways in the first place. And that's what makes the gap. The gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you are trading on the side of power money. Okay. And that is what controls stocks, not traders, not all of us in here. And that's why you have to learn how to read this if you want to be a consistently profitable trader. It's not about getting it right some of the time. It's just not enough. If you get it right some of the time when you trade, you will never have enough conviction or be able to trade with any significant size to be able to make any real money in the market. And after your commissions and other fees that you pay to your brokers, you're not up, okay? Platform fees, commissions, all the things that the back end costs are that it costs to trade and have money in your account. I trade to make money. That is what the focus needs to be. Someone emailed me about something just recently. Today I responded to the gentleman. You can't be in my live trading room unless you actually take my class and learn what I know. And he said he's taken a lot of classes. <laughs> I said I understand that. Except for in my class I actually teach you how to make money. There's a lot of classes out there that teach you good information, but maybe not how to make money in the market. And the only way to really make this worthwhile is if you learn how to make money. Trading is fun, it's interesting, the stock market's interesting, but quite frankly, I would never do it. Never, never, never do it. If there wasn't money to be made, I'd do something else to make money because I like to make money, okay? So I'm teaching people how to make money in the market. And how am I doing that? I'm training their brain so they know how to read a chart right to know who's in control so that when they take the button in the train, long or short, they know to take it in the right direction so they will make the money in the trade. Okay? Power money makes gaps. Power money moves the market. Power money is in control. It is in control at all times. It is in control right now in the SPY, and the market will make a new high this month. Even though there's 27 red days in the last two months of the market, the power of money is still in control of this market. So learning a system that teaches you how to read the direction of power of money is something that you can use, not just now, not today. This is not something that's just going to last for a week or a month or a year, forever, forever, because you are training your brain to actually read control, the price control. And that is extremely powerful. It's so powerful that you could use my system forever, as long as the U.S. stock market exists. And as long as the U.S. stock market exists and has a close and open, there will always be gaps, which is a strategy that shows you what to do with the price, okay? Whether to short it, sell it, or buy it. Using a system and a checklist is a very professional way to trade, and even professional traders that are trading on big trading desks have checklists they go through. 
So the purpose of this 26-point checklist is what? Number one, to find a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big moves in the day. Early confirmation of the bias. I want to have early confirmation. What do I mean between 9.30 and 10? I'm not taking my first trade at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Even as a day trader, there's, you can trade anywhere from 9.30 to 4 o'clock Eastern time, okay? But I'm looking for the confirmation between 9.30 and 10. I'm also looking for precise entries with follow-through and a good risk to reward. And a good risk to reward, in my opinion, is three. Three or more, okay? Could you take a trade and it only makes one and a half hours or two hours? Yes. If it gets to the target and that's what it is, then you're out. But ideally, every stock I look to trade, I'm looking for three risk units at least. So the 26-point rating system is a multi-purpose system. Multi-purpose, okay? It can be used to rate stocks to play intraday. However, it can also be used to take swing or core trades in stocks. And as I said earlier, some people have taken my class and used it already for options. And someone's going to do it for futures, I'm sure, at some point. One of the reasons why the Golden Gap course is so unique is because a system can be used in multiple ways to trade one stock symbol, meaning you can take it on the day or you can hold it. It can be used to trade in multiple time frames depending on your financial goals, whether short-term or long-term. And how is this possible? Because the quality of the gap, if it's a high-quality gap, will follow through. Why? Because of the control. The control, the control, the control. How is this possible? Because everything in the system follows the patterns created by large institutional money. It could happen on the day or it could happen in the longer term. This is why the information taught in the Golden Gap course that I teach is so valuable. There's so many systems out there, but it's very, very rare that something can be used in multiple purposes in multiple ways. And that's the that's because of the high level of the advanced information that I'm teaching that's reading this so particularly. That's why it's just so detailed. I mean, I'm a detailed person to begin with. I'm very analytical to begin with. That's how I figure this stuff out. But 26 things really is a lot of things to look at, but you want to get it right. You want it to get it right as much as you can. And so that's why I have to look at those many things because I like to win. I like to make money, like I said. Okay. And you want to have the odds on your side by getting it to be very, very accurate. So the rating system really uses advanced technical analysis in ascertaining the direction of the setup, and therefore it can be used in multiple time frames. Your targets would be different if you held something overnight. So again, as I was saying, this system teaches you how to make money. So let's look at some examples here and see. And really, this is, I just put this picture of me in here so people can see me. It, I trade what I teach. I, I only teach what I do. I'm training people's brains to think like my brain. People always say, well, I want to be like you. I want to be like you. Then just take in every single thing that I say. Every single thing that I say, just take it in, okay? I teach people how to make money in the stock market. I'm very, 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 very good at reading price. I figured out the stuff that I'm teaching people. And every day, right now, even in the market, everything I see, I'll tell you right now, the SPY is going to 300 this year. The SPY is going to run more than 100 points from right now, February 2nd, by the end of the calendar year. And how do I know that? This I'm the only one that's even saying this. Everyone out there saying the market's going to crash. And I'm telling you, the SPY is going to go to 300 by the end of the calendar year. And I have 100% conviction. So I'm teaching people how to make money because if you learn what I know, you'll know not to sell out of your lungs in the market and you'll also know to be buying the market so that you can make the 100 point run and the 30% jump that the market is going to have this calendar year when you might do something else, in which case you don't get the money. It all comes down to being profitable. Now let's look at some trades here. This was back in January, actually. This was the chart of five, companies called five, ticker symbols five. The stock gapped down, okay? The stock closed up here the night before at 43-something and gapped down here to 37-something. So this could be any number. It could be 50 cents. It could be a dollar. It could be $10. It doesn't really matter. I just get up in the morning and look for whatever company is gapping. And again, I like to look at shorts, but you can look at longs just as well. In fact, five uh, here, you could have been long this. You might have been long this, actually, okay? There were some bullish gaps in this chart, too. But I'm just going to talk here about the example here in this one here today, which was a short, okay? 
So you look at the stock and you're going to get up in the morning, you're going to rate it to determine if this is going to, it could, might have gotten bought. If this hadn't rated well, it might have gotten bought. It might have gotten bought and rallied all the way up here. Okay? This was showing a lot of signs of strength. I mean, I'm not going to even argue with that. Look at all the green bars in here. So you have to rate it. This is where the rating system tells you. Do I go long this or do I short it? I don't know what to do. Let the rating system tell me. Again, what is the rating system telling me? It's reading price in the chart to determine the control. Okay? Uh, let me just look at a question here. This is a question from Mike. And anyone else has wants questions here as we go through. How do you differentiate between a golden gap and an exhaustion gap, whereby the gap seen is merely the last bulls getting in the move, i.e., shouldn't you be suspect of a gap on the SPY after it has not had a pullback to the 20-month EMA since 2012? All right, well, this is that's a couple questions. Let's answer the first question first. How do you differentiate between a golden gap and exhaustion gap? There is no such thing as an exhaustion gap. Boom. And even this thing, Golden Gap, I just made up the name, but it's reading power money. An exhaustion gap doesn't read any power money. And let me explain why. Because people can't play exhaustion, listen, as a strategy. Many people have a incorrect idea of what exhaustion is. It's too, oh, uh, what's the word? Like what I do is very specific, doom, 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 with numbers. This idea of exhaustion, you might look at something and say, oh, that thing's exhausted, and that thing can't even go any farther down. And then it, then it continues dropping like a 1,000 points. I might look at that and say, in fact, here, let's look at the market. Let's talk about the opposite. We're talking about, let's just go back here, hold on. And I may have to come back to this other question here to look at more charts when we're done here at the... A lot of people are looking at this market. I see I don't have the whole thing here. A lot of people are looking at this market. They're saying, let's take away the opposite of what you're saying. You're saying it's awesome. People are saying this market's extended. They're saying, oh my gosh, this market's extended. It's too extended. It's extended. It's extended. I read this market here, and I'm saying this market isn't extended. It's perfect. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. To do what? Go higher. And you might read that and say it's extended. There is no such thing as extended or exhausted. There isn't as a strategy to play consistently for money. Because what you look at as extended is not what I look at as extended. What you look at as exhausted is not what I look at as exhausted. That's guessing. I don't guess. I read the information and then I know what to do. I read the price and I know what to do. I wait for it to happen then I know what to do. Okay? The guessing tops. And guessing bottoms, which is essentially what you're doing in exhaustion or extension when you're playing it, is not a strategy. It's not a strategy. It doesn't consistently work to make money. Because every time you think something's extended, like, this is what's happening in the market right now, people. People are shorting this market. Because of exactly what Mike just said. They're saying it's extended. I'm telling you, the market, I have a hundred percent, I have a thousand percent conviction. There's no chance of failure. No chance of failure. The market doesn't make a new high this year. No chance of failure. Okay? And people are reading this as exhausted to the upside or basically what I would say extended because it's been rallying. It's too uh, much leaving up to choice. It's guessing, guessing, guessing. Okay? I predict that something is going to go to a target, but I'm not predicting. I'm not predicting the directional bias. I'm saying I see it. Boom. Check, 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 check. That's the directional bias. Let's play it. I predict the target. I have information to predict that based on the price. And based on the gap, however, I'm not guessing that it's going to collapse. Do you understand the difference? And when you're playing extension exhaustion, it is not a strategy. Don't play it. Don't play it. You're not going to see long-term success. And not only that, you are actually training your brain in the wrong fashion to read control. Because when something's rallying like the market, guess who's in control? Who's in control? The bulls. So you're playing against the control. You are. Um, this is just a lot of questions here. Hold on. Shouldn't you? Let me just go to Mike's second one. Shouldn't you be suspect of a gap in the spy after has not had pullback? Let's. I don't have enough information here to talk about that spy chart. At the end, let's go back to that. Um, Nimble Trader has a question here too.
How did you get to the target of 300 that's five from this price action? How did I already call the this target set the SPY made already last year? Because I'm just so good at reading price, nimble trader. Go back and watch all my videos from last year. The SPY made new highs and didn't have any of those numbers anywhere in the chart, and I said all the numbers and it hit them. That question, I don't have an answer for you. I'm that good at reading price that I can see something, the way it's moving, that the strength is going to come into that effect because of a lot of things that are happening right now. People are shorting the market. They're not going to give up on it. People are going to do exactly what Mike just said. It's going to rally over the high and people are going to short it again. And every time that happens and the market gets bought, then it's going to go over the high again and pop through those people that are shorts. And the buying's going to come in. The buying's going to keep coming in. And then the people keep shorting and keep going. It's going to drive this market to some insane number this year. That's what I'm seeing. That's, I'm seeing how it's all playing out. And that's how I'm seeing the numbers. But I saw the, I saw numbers last year the SPY never hit. The SPY made all time highs last year. I called every single one of those numbers that it hit. You go back and watch all my videos on YouTube and live time when I made them, when I made those calls. So how do I see something that's not even there? That is just experience, doing this for almost seven years. And I'm so, so, so good at reading power that I see that the power is that strong. That's the best way I can explain it, Nimble Trader. I see that the power is so strong and that people are going to get flipped on through and the Byrons are already planning on coming in and are going to come in. And they're going to come in with force and people are going to get flipped on through that the power that's going to happen in the market is going to be so incredible that it's going to run like that. I saw it in October of last year. So, and also the market is holding the least level of support. It is holding the least level of support, which again gives me conviction. We'll talk about that at the end here. We'll talk about that at the end. I can bring up the whole chart of the SPY. I'll bring up the whole chart of the SPY and then go back to your questions there, Mike. Uh, Daniel P., I don't know what you mean. Never say never. I don't know what, which one you were talking about there because that was a couple questions back. All right, let's go, let's go over five. So you could have shorted five, okay? Again, you would get up in the morning and rate the gap. Stock closed here, gap down. This is a one-minute chart. <coughs> Excuse me. And you would look to take a short in this if it rated per the 26-point golden gap rating system as a good short. You're not going to buy this. You're going to short it. Price of the entry is 37. Risk is 35 cents. This is how you're sizing yourself here. You're risking $700 if you're an advanced trader, or you risk $100, whatever you want to risk. It's according to what you can afford. It dropped a dollar. It actually dropped more than a dollar, but this was the first target. And you would have made $2,000. If you took 1,000 shares, you would have made $1,000. This is a move. This is a day trade. Boom. Risk to reward is 2.85. That's good. So you risked 700, you made 2,000. It went lower. I'm just showing you here. It went through and went all the way down to 35.50-ish. You could have made another 50 cents. Again, you would have had to be very, 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 very tight here with this because you're up a lot by the time it squishes down. But you could just get out right at the target, which was 36. And, and a dollar is a move. And this all happened here in the morning. See it? Right on down. It did break through and continued past 11 o'clock. And like I said, dropped another 50 cents. So you could have made you could have made even more if you wanted to. You actually could have made three thousand dollars in this trade if you were seven hundred. But you know you have to be very very particular and tight then once you're in trades. And I I tend to just play this period in here. And this is really what I like to do. And every once in a while I'll do something in the afternoon. But it's like only if something has a dream target in it. It's power trading the day, or it actually if it opened and swooshed. If it opened and swooshed, I might trade something in the afternoon. But that doesn't happen on every play. Okay, nice trade here. And again. I went a dollar. So if you took 500 shares, it went, you would have made $500. If you took 100 shares, you would have made 100 bucks. You would have risked $35 to make 100 bucks, and that's a good trade. Okay. So let's talk about if you did want to take less risk. A beginner person, you don't want to risk $700. Let's say you risk 70 bucks. Okay. You took 200 shares of it, moved a dollar. Total profit is what? $200. Okay. This is a nice trade. You only were $70 and you made 200 bucks. If you made $200 every day as a day trader, that's actually not half bad if you're only trading for the first 30 minutes, first hour of the day. So if you could make $4,000 a month working in less than an hour on top of your regular job, let's say, that's huge, okay? 
massive. It's almost 50 grand a year, extra money that you have just working this one hour a day in the morning. And if you can do that for any amount of time, a few months even, you could risk more, obviously, and then you could even make more than 50 grand a year. But I'm just saying $200 a day, there's five days in a week. That's a thousand bucks a week. And that's not risking some crazy amount of share size or money. Okay. It's only $200 a day. But in the whole and the bigger picture, it's actually quite a lot of money for the amount of time that you're spending trading as a day trader. So advanced technical analysis so it gives you conviction. It gives you conviction in the rating of the gap that you could risk more money if you want to. That you could get to the point where you could risk five, six, seven hundred dollars on a trade. Maybe even someday a thousand. Okay. That's a lot of money you have to have an account to sustain that to take the buying power of the stocks. We'll talk about that later. But it's certainly plausible. How? If you have conviction. Now, the, one of the nice things about, again, my system and what I teach in the class is now is very particular for the gap rating of knowing what to do. This was QCOM. This is a 15-minute chart at gap down. It's also, I teach in the class, again, I teach you how to make money. I teach you how to take the entries, and I teach you where the targets are, which is the exits. I did QCOM, and I had the exit perfectly. I actually had a perfect entry and a perfect exit on this QCOM. And it is very, 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 very uh, challenging, I'd say, to every single solitary day be able to pick where somebody's going to go at the low of the day if you're doing a short or the high of the day if it's doing a long. Because sometimes things don't happen exactly in that morning period to the maximum number you want. Like sometimes stocks make the low of the day in the morning, but sometimes they don't. And I just don't like to trade late in the afternoon. But in the case of QCOM, it actually set the low of the day in the morning, and it actually went right to the target, and it was a perfect, perfect exit. And, and where did I get that number? Like magically pulling it out of myself? No. It's because I teach how to get these numbers on, on the chart. It's, it's an advanced technical analysis. And it's there. It's, it's, it's there. I know how to do it. But it's there. Now, in the question of nimble trader, he's asking me about the spy. How am I able to predict a number that's not there? Because I can see, I can read strength and weakness so well that I can tell how aggressively something's going to happen in a big, big way. And in the rating system that I teach, okay, the idea is not to get a 26 of 26 in the points. It's to get 20 or more. That means that a stock has to rate 20 points or more to trade it in the direction of the gap. But if a stock rates 23, 24, 25, 26, 26 is better than 20. And that tells me something about the quality of the gap as far as the possibility for what I call a dream target in something. That it's going to be so strong, the move, the momentum, the volatility is going to be so strong in whatever way whether it's to the downside or the upside. So that's how, that's another layering. Again, this is advanced. This is another layering on top of everything that I'm already teaching that I do. So I know if something rates 25 points, if, I, if I'm looking at two gaps, I'm looking at QCOM and something else, okay? QCOM rates may be better than something else. So then I know that QCOM is going to be the better one, okay? Now, let's look at this. This was the one minute trade in the QCOM. Short it, boom. And again, this happens very quickly in the morning, drops on down. First move of the day drops into 10 o'clock. It does hit the first target. Although this continued lower and I did hold this later. As I said, I held this into the late, late morning because the stock ended up going and I love this gap. I mean, I just had 100% conviction it was going to the number and it did. This chart is, again, this chart is screwing here. This is actually showing a, a bar that didn't really happen in here. But this was the day of the gap in here. It just looks weird. So this actually gapped here. This bar didn't actually close like this on the 28th. 29th was the day. So just erase that from your mind for a second because the stock actually closed up at a higher price. But here's where it opened. And this was the move that the stock had on the day. From the high up here, it was 66 something. From the low down here, it was 62.40 something. 62, 48, or 47, I think was the low in the day. So here again, you read this, and it tells you that it's going to have a big move in the quality of the gap. The entry was 64.85. Nice entry. The stock is a little bit pricey. It's not a cheaper, so you risk 50 cents. $700 risk means you have to take 1,400 shares only. 
But again, it's the risk to reward. You piecemeal out, book into the first target 700, which is half, hold the rest. You're profitable, you're up in it already. Total profit 2240. Risk to reward in this one is better than the last play, even 3.2. If you, you could have held this whole thing down here for $2.35, but again, you know, it, I, I like to book into certain targets, and this was the first target. But you would have made more, actually, if you held the whole thing. So this turns $700 into $2,240. Do you see this is, this is real money here? Anything with a comma in it, as in day trade, is real money. So let's talk about percentage of return in day trading, because people always ask this. It's based on an R concept, whether it's $100, $200, $300, $700, $700, whatever it is, it's based on an R concept. What does an R mean? It's one risk unit. The risk unit per trade should be equal or close to equal per trade. The risk unit is the amount of money you're actually risking in the trade if you use a hard stop. If you do not use a hard stop, you have unlimited risk. I use hard stops. Many people do not know where to put a stop and do not use them. However, it's important to use hard stops no matter what your level, trader, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Someone had asked me in the last week or two weeks or something about hard stops. You must use hard stops when you trade on the one minute chart in the morning because stocks can go in your direction or against you and you have to have the stop in. And if you don't have the stop in, then what is the amount of money that you're risking? Then the whole R concept is blown. You could say, well, I have an idea. I kind of want it here. I think I'm taking this many shares. No, you need to know exactly Again, I'm very, very meticulous with everything that I do with numbers and making money. And if it's 35 cents, it's 35 cents, and I need to know how much. If I take a, a certain amount, then I need to know, okay? It, it can't be you take 5,000 shares of something and it stops 35 cents. I That's too much. You understand what I'm saying? You have to have the stop in, and you have to know how, where the stop needs to be. Again, people think it's impossible to know where the stop needs to be. No, it's not. It's not impossible. I know where the stop needs to be, and I know where the targets are, okay? And if I get stopped down, it's because the, the trade doesn't go on to work. And then you want to take the loss and be out. And you find another gap or another trader, you just stop for the day and get back tomorrow. You take one loss. You have no profitability without a defined risk. That defined risk needs to be set in stone and the same on almost every trade you take or close to the same. Otherwise, how do you even know if what you're even doing is even a profitable thing that you're even doing? You look at it by comparing each trade with the same risk unit. That's how you know. Many, many day traders fail to understand this. Stops, having them in, forces you to have a defined amount that you're risking. So I don't trade based on share size. It's based on dollar risk. That's how you'd be consistently profitable. Now, as far as return on investments, again, this is very, very different than investing. As a day trader, I'm taking something where I'm actually taking a position of stock. If I'm taking 1,000 shares of something at a strike price of 51, that's using 51,000 in buying power. I don't need 51,000 in cash to take that. I need that much in leverage, okay? It's not about the percentage of return on investment based on the percentage of cash that I'm taking dollar for dollar in the, in the actual share size. The fact is that brokers give you leverage. It depends where you trade a retail account and proprietary day trading account, but every trader trades with leverage. So you have to understand, again, the risk unit is the amount you're risking per trade. Your return on investment is not about the buying power or the cost of the stock itself because you're flat every day as a day trader by the end of the day. You're not holding overnights. If you do that, that's a different story. But you base your risk reward and return on investment based on what the risk unit is and then how much dollars you make based on the risk unit, whether one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Because you don't need the cost price stock of the stock actually to day trade. It's a wonderful thing that you actually can day trade with leverage. Otherwise, the market would only be for people that are wealthy. Regular people could never trade the market if that was the case. So the bigger picture really is to get to the point where you have an advanced understanding of things that you can trade with sizable risk so that you can actually make more money. But really, even if you're at that point where you're brand, brand new to trading or you have a certain amount of money and you can't take advanced risk, you still want to make money with the money that you have, even if you're only risking $70 in the trade. Otherwise, you'll never get to the point where you can take more risk. So that's why you have to keep the bigger picture in mind where you want to go. Sometimes it's frustrating because we all want things to happen so quickly. Right, 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 right now. We want everything now, now, now. We're in a now society. It's me, 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 me. I get it, okay? And trust me, I was there when I started to trade. I thought I was going to figure this thing out. Look at these split. And it took me way longer than I thought to figure it out. And I'm very intelligent. 
So the fact is that you have to understand the bigger picture is to be successful so that you can do this to make a certain amount of money once you learn it. And what you have now, you're going to take to learn to trade to use it to be profitable. Many people jump the gun. They want to trade without learning what to do. They're just going to lose the money they have or waste time. Time is a big commodity in the world today. Huge commodity. Okay. And that's why actually having real live time trading action in something like the strategy I teach, which is gaps, and knowing when something's doing in real life time is actually a huge commodity because it tells you what to do with whatever position you have or whether or not to take the position at all. And the bigger picture, really, if you want to become a professional trader, is you have more time to yourself. I have the afternoons to myself unless I'm doing a webinar like tonight. But this didn't start till 4.30, and I did have the afternoon to myself. So you have more time for leisure because you're not working 9 to 5 at a job or even overtime. And you also can make a nice lifestyle if you learn how to trade the market. Because as I said, there's billions of dollars that run through the market. And all you need is a tiny, tiny, tiny piece of that in order to be successful. And in the longer term, this is a solid strategy because it can be played on many, many time frames and many, many trading genres. And that's something that can have multiple uses for you if you want to learn how to do my system. I also happen to like working from home. And I also like working for myself. And if you trade for yourself, you'll work from home and work for yourself. So I teach a class. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches one solid strategy. It teaches multiple entries and plays. It teaches you how to trade the open, which is between 9.30 and 10 a.m. It teaches you how to book money intraday in stocks. Again, you will need to book it to be profitable. It teaches advanced chart reading skills and teaches you how to get conviction in your trading and the market as a source of wealth. Many, many people come to me. They've been through the ringer and this thing, that, the other thing, stuff they've gone through, classes they've taken money, they've lost to the market. You need to change that around. And I found that the best thing to do that is actually to be making money. And the live trading room is open for people to join that have taken the class, and then people can actually take my calls. And that helps them get going after the class to book profitable trades, which helps their conviction then. It helps their mentality, even if they had a hard time in the past. The room is beneficial for people because they can take trades and then make money after they do the class. So I teach a course. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. And it teaches you what direction to trade the stock on the day. That's how you're going to make money. And it teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So why would you take my class? Why would you want to learn from me? I have something that's very unique. There's absolutely no one on the planet, no one in this world, no one in this universe that's doing what I do. I'm very unique. There's no one that trades gaps the way I do. There's no one that trades the way that I do. I can say that with 100% conviction as well, which is why I can call what the market's going to do too. It's, this is very specific. And I'm teaching you how to read the chart in an advanced manner and how to trade the U.S. stock market if it's something that you want to learn how to do. So empower yourself to trade if you want to. Again, the class is a two-day course. It teaches you professional bearish gaps. You can flip the points and go long if you want to. I do look at longs in the room, but I prefer to short. Why? Because the downside happens very, very quickly. And sometimes the stock can go to the target in five minutes in a short. And I just love that about shorting. Retakes are free. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. The class is this weekend, February 7th and 8th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, and the cost of the class is $29.99. If you are interested, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. I must tell you that the cost of the class is increasing on March 1st. The price of the class on March 1st is going to be $34.99. I'm just letting everyone know. I'm giving everyone a month's advance. All the people that follow me, watch my videos. I'm telling you right now, if you want to do the class in February this month, the cost is $29.99 if you want to do it. And you can make that back in one trade. I also teach a class that's called the Trends Course. This is at the end of February, the 24th and 26th. This teaches you how to trade long-term trends. The cost of this class is $9.99. This isn't about day trading, okay? This is a longer-term trend class for overnights if you want to do it or any longer-term trends in stock charts or even ETFs like the market. And if you want to do both, you could do both classes in February for one price and save almost $500 for $34.99. The information to sign up is not on my website. You have to email me for sign up information if you want to register. And the last day to sign up is Friday, the day before the class. Earnings season is now. It's in full swing all the month of February into March. When earnings season happens, stocks have a lot of gaps. 
So it gives you a lot of picks on the day where you could actually rate and trade a couple of things on one day. You could rate and trade actually anything that rates 20 points or more. So let me just see if there's any questions here. Thank you for coming. And I did want to go back to Mike's questions about the market, and we'll look at that. Uh, G2 is asking me, how long does it take to get through the 26-point checklist? Well, I could do it in my sleep. But if you're new and take the class, it's probably going to take you, I'd say, between 5 to 8 minutes. 5 to 8 minutes. And as you get good, it should be less than 5 minutes. It should be 1 to 2 minutes after you do them. Right after the class, it's probably going to take you 5 to 8 minutes. And once you're doing it, okay, for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, you should be able to do it in one to two minutes. It sounds like a lot, but you're doing it every day. It's like riding a bike, G2. It's like, oh, you know, you don't think about how do you ride the bike, and you don't think about, you know, taking one foot in front of the other. So, again, it's about practice. Doing what? Training your brain. It's training your brain. You're training your brain. There's one reason and one reason only that I'm successful. I have an incredible brain. And you know what? So do you. You're probably just not using all of it. We don't even use half of our brains. We don't. If we want to be successful in this world, if we want to be evolved, if we want to trade the market successfully, then you're going to have to use your brain. You will use it. I'm forcing you to do it. And that's actually one of the best, best things about connecting with me on this planet. And anyone that finds me and comes to me, I always say this. As a, anyone that finds me and comes to me as a student, you, you get so much value out of coming to me because I am teaching your brain to use portions of itself that it may never have used, and that will stick with you. And the more you are with me, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm training your brain. And that, that is actually invaluable. It's like, does it even have a price on it? And the people that are with me now for the last one to two years know that and understand and get it. And this is why I have a successful business. All right, Mike had some questions. Does anyone else have any other questions before I get to Mike's questions? I'm going to take this off and bring up my chart really quickly here. Hold on one sec. 